Morena Coco, up at Adam this morning and I've decided to come outside. Went for a little hikoi to see if I could find a, a cool tree to sit under and read my story. There's a little ngahere behind our whare and um, actually when I was started to read I could see that I had all the shadows of the tree on, on our book for today and it wasn't ideal because you couldn't see the pictures. So then I had to come out the front of our whare and sit under a really beautiful tree out the front and I will read our story from here. So my dog sitting up there looking down here thinking now what are you doing out there? But uh, it's okay Kate Pai, I don't mind. Um, people going back and forwards thinking what is she doing under that tree reading her story? Also Kate Pai because I'm okay sitting under a tree reading a story. I'm absolutely fine, a little breezy but also good. Um, so today's story, the song of the Cody or the Song of Cody by Melinda Seisnanik and Dominic Ford. It was written by Melinda and illustrated by Dominic. The Song of Cody. And yeah, I've just got my uh, my walking kakahu on this morning. So, um, yeah. No funny get up, although yes, I do go out in public like this too. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time, when the land was new and time and memory were just beginning, a giant began to grow out of the rich earth. Through a cloak of mist, young Cody raised his arms to the warming sun and the sap inside him stirred. His roots dug deep into the ground. He felt the land beneath him and the sky above him and the life inside him and he was content. Years passed and Cody grew tall and vigorous. At first he lived alone in the valley. He spoke with the earth but the great earth was busy with its own concerns. I am the earth, nothing is as strong as me, it said. Everyone depends on me. I was here before you were born, and I will still be here long after you are gone. to the sun for friendship but the sun said so many love and worship me without me all would perish I cannot stop talk to talk to one tree even one as mighty as you Cody The rain came down to embrace Cody, but the sun soon dragged it back into the sky to make clouds to wrap itself in. By night, the moon tugged at Cody's heart on her way across the sky, but she was changeable and distant. There is only me, she said, to lure the tides and rouse the crops, and the sun chases at my heels. I must keep going. <laughs> Cody danced with the wind, and the years passed. Matthias having a dance of his own at the moment. Cody continued to grow and slowly the valley began to fill with other trees, then bushes, vines and flowers. And the trees and bushes, vines and flowers became a forest. Birds, insects and other animals came and made their homes there and raised to be young. The forest hummed with life.
Now Cody beckoned the birds to come and sing in his branches. His son heart swelled at the sound of their voices. He spread his arms wide and made nooks for their nests. Man came, people of the land, hunting and gathering amongst the, the trees. Their voices sang a different song. They admired, admired Cody's strength. They laid their hands upon his skin and climbed up through his arms to see the world. But the birds grew weary and sometimes the men sang songs of war. And the forest rang with strange and ugly sounds. Cody watched and wondered. New people arrived, singing songs of urgency. Cody held his arms out to them in welcome, offering them strength from his strength, but they rushed on by. Respecting his size and dignity, they never put an axe to Cody, but they took other trees to fuel the engines of their desires. When the forest stood in their way, they cut a path. Monsters made of dark night, belching smoke, carved scars across the land. The valley fell silent. Cody watched and wondered. Then man turned his attention elsewhere and different forests grew of glass and steel and concrete. Man admired the strength of these new forests and climbed these new trees to look, not at the world beyond, but at the one they had made. They painted pictures of trees and admired their beauty and their own skill and art, and the forest in the valley was left to its own devices. Years passed. Cody grew old, his heart full of all he had ever seen and all he had ever heard. He felt the years like a heavy burden. Birds slowly returned to the forest, carrying the weightlessness of the air with them. When they perched in his branches and burst into song, he felt lighter. When the birds flew away with their freedom and their lightness, Cody's heart would sink again. He had loved the earth, but now he yearned to know something new. His roots were weary and they began to re release their grasp on the rocks and dirt. He reached his arms up as he used to reach for the sun and began to sing his own song, the song of his life, a song of endings and of beginnings. And the birds came, all the birds of the forest and it ever travelled the sky above and called him friend, came down to his welcoming arms. They alighted side by side, less than a feather's breadth apart. With their claws they gripped him tight and for the love of Cody and his generous spirit, for the comfort and safety of his sheltering branches, for his strength and beauty and heart, as they had held tight to his branches, they flapped their wings. Cody looked up at the sky and felt the lightness of the air. Let's go, the birds sang, begin again. Finally, he let go completely and with every last connection with the earth gone, Cody was lifted up and borne away, still singing higher and higher into the sky, his heart filled with joy. Ko mo te 
if so, I'll call me. That was our uh, story for today. I hope you enjoyed that. I may sit out here a little while longer if it doesn't get too chilly. Just enjoying the sounds of my neighbourhood. It's very quiet and peaceful actually. So, kaki te whanau. Hope you're all having a beautiful day. Kaki te apopo.